So what you're looking at here is the bones of a Toyota Matrix, electronic power assist steering, and the 69 Camaro standard steering column. Um, what I'm attempting to do is marry the two together in order to have electronic power steering on Nadine, my uh, Camaro project. So one of the things that spurred this idea of the electronic power steering is freeing up real estate for hood clearance and for the turbo. Um, I think the power steering pump went right there, which is where I kind of am hoping I might be able to stick the uh, air conditioning compressor. And then also I'm wanting to take the alternator from up here and do a low mount down here just to get weight lower and to just kind of clean up the engine bay. Um, in the early planning phase of this project, I had uh, intended to maybe run just a shorter steering column. Um, I don't know if you ever noticed in previous videos, but there's only about an inch between the rack and pinion and the stock steering column rag joint. And I couldn't quite figure out how to make that work. So I was looking at spending two or 300 bucks for a steering column from like Speedway Auto or Summit or Jags, just a universal job that was maybe a couple inches shorter so that instead of sticking out two or three inches, it would have been closer to flush with the firewall, possibly giving me enough room for a lash up. Um, but instead of that, I went down the YouTube rabbit hole of electronic power assist. And there's a guy on YouTube, I think, I think he calls himself the Ranger Station, or at least that's the website that I found all of his breakdown on, saying that Toyota Corolla, 2010, or a Prius, or uh, Yaris, Nissan Cube, a few others have electronic power assist steering that runs in limp mode. And the limp mode is apparently a pretty pretty viable solution. It's a very comfortable feel uh, for steering. And if for some reason you lost power for the electronic power assist, you would have manual steering still. So I got this from the wrecking yard. Uh, I thought I was getting it out of a 2010 Toyota Corolla, but it happened to be out of a 2010 Toyota Matrix, which was a direct um, part number reference for the Corolla that I thought I was getting it out of. Either way, I got the engine, the um, steering shaft, um, this stuff, all of it, and the ECU, which I've already tested all of it before I tore it apart. Unfortunately, I didn't take any pictures. And I tested it, and even though this specific matrix matrix isn't listed as one of them that'll run in fail safe, um, I have verified that this um, ECU will run in fail safe mode. So I think I'm good to go. Uh, I got all of it for $80. It's currently March 23rd, uh, $220 on eBay for essentially everything that I got. Um, nothing real tricky about pulling it apart. I used a steering wheel puller to pull off the steering wheel and the rest of it pretty much unscrewed. The only thing that I kind of foobarred is I didn't realize that this clamp that goes around the steering shaft this little bolt, I don't know what I did with it, but it had a round head. And so I'm like, man, there's no way I'm going to get that bolt out. So I cut it off. And then in cutting it off, I figured out that it was finger tight. So Wahoo for me, I probably lost a couple of bucks on reselling a uh, ignition module for a Prius. <laughs> Who cares? So anyways, I tore apart the entire Prius column. Um, I also tore apart the entire 69 Camaro column, which was a nightmare. I followed um, some generic YouTube videos. Uh, I'm not a professional 
nor would I have been able to videotape it because I said lots of bad words and it took me uh, a while to get apart. Uh, the only tip or trick that I can offer about disassembling the steering column is that once I got all the turn signals and stuff out, um, I had to grind down a flat screwdriver because once you get everything apart, in order to pull out this steering locking mechanism, oh, where is it? Oh, got it. Um, well, anyways, hopefully you guys know what a steering tumbler looks like. In order to get at it, I had to push a retaining clip through this hole and even though this is a pretty tiny screwdriver, it was still getting hung up on the side of this uh, this boss here. So I had to grind it down just ever so slightly in order to fit through there. Because I was pr pressing pretty hard on that retaining clip and it just wouldn't come, wouldn't come, and wouldn't come. And then I figured out that it was my screwdriver that was getting hung up on the sides. So... Um, that was pretty much the hardest part of disassembling the column for the Camaro. Um, the rest of it, like I said, I followed other people's YouTube videos, so I don't have any novel insight on how to get it apart. Um, except for maybe in hindsight, I cut my hand. Massive gouge there. I don't think it'll require stitches. But in order to get this retaining plate off, they make a special tool that compresses uh, a spring in order to get out a retaining clip. Uh, the, all the videos on YouTube show it. They used a special tool. I jerry-rigged it and eventually got it apart with much frustration. So, so far, um, I took some reference measurements for how far the steering wheel sticks out into the passenger compartment. And um, I basically ended up in taking apart the entire steering column. This is the very, very inner sleeve for the 69 Camaro. Um, and it used to be about two and a half feet long. Um, there's the shaft that's inside the Camaro column. So I have cut it down all the way to here. I'm only using about four and a half inches almost exactly. And the reason why I've done that is because this, oh, I'm going to give you guys vertigo, um, press fits into here. This is the, the sleeve, the part that the steering wheel, well, here, let me put all this together. So this is where your turn signal, um, and whatnot mount to and then it goes in here it's all held together and this right here is press fit into here i just hammered it out with a dead blow and just to get it out but the whole reason that i cut this down as far as i did and hammered it out of that is because i wanted to marry it to this which is the tilt column um, mechanism off of the Corolla Prius and it also has some some fore and aft um, adjustment so I'm hoping I don't know yet I'll add more to this video later but I'm hoping that this will allow me to have tilt and for shorter drivers aka my wife be able to move the steering wheel toward her or away from her so Again, I've been getting all sorts of lucky on this project, and this little inner sleeve from the Camaro column is basically a interference fit here. Maybe not interference, but it slides in there, and as you can see, there's like, I don't know, we'll call it 30 thousandths of a gap total. So what I think I'm going to do is weld on the steering shaft from the oh my goodness i'm gonna fall over um so what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna measure and see how long i need this to be overall to stick out 
of the steering column. Um, this is where my steering wheel that I already have mounts to, obviously, and where the turn signals and all the factory stuff. Um, I'm going to try to utilize the factory uh, key, turn signals, yada, yada, yada. And I already purchased a fancy steering wheel so that it looks pretty. So I'm going to measure, figure out how far it needs to stick out. I'm going to cut this here. I'm probably going to cut this here. And then I will weld this to this. I might try to go to the scrapyard and find a small sleeve that fits over this and over this so that I have more welding surface and it kind of like stabilizes the joint. But I haven't got that far yet. So that's where I am now. Uh, right now I've got the Prius Calm mounted and married to what's left of the 69 um, steering column. I uh, still need to put everything back together and test fit and make sure that I like where everything is. Um, but anyways, I, come on. Man, there's nothing holding this on. Anyways, so this uh, sadly represents way more time than I'd like to admit. Probably, well, it's midnight now, so about four hours. <laughs> um, I tried a couple of different ways to get what's left of the Prius shaft and the stub of the Camaro shaft to be perfectly aligned. And I ended up using a piece of sleeving material. And let's see, what else did I do? I cut up a soda can because I didn't have quite the perfect inside diameters because they were slightly mismatched. So I cut strips of soda can and wound them around this shaft to take up the play, both top and bottom, and ended up welding it together. And um, there's a little bit of run out by a little bit. I mean, oh, probably an eighth inch. Yeah, 16th of an inch. I don't know if you can even see it with me spinning it, but... I'd say there's 16th of an inch of run out. Anyways, for a steering column, I think it'll be fine when I have the bits and pieces back together on top of it. Um, it appears to be pretty bueno, it doesn't rub. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it overall. I think it'll work fine. Um, assuming I can figure out how to put the turn signal and the 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 ignition cylinder and all that stuff in um, the overall length and these mounting tabs, I think are going to work out pretty darn awesome. Um, like I said, I'm going to stitch together two or three videos. So to get to this point, what I would have done differently is the Prius column or Prius shaft, sorry, golly, Prius shaft had a threaded spline on this side that I cut off for some reason. And in hindsight, I would have left that on there and threaded it, rammed the hole out a little bit bigger, threaded it for like a 3 8 16th bolt, um, and then drill the hole in the Camaro shaft, same, and threaded it for a 3 8 shaft, and then just um, screwed them together. And I think that would have worked really, really well and been really straightforward. Um, but when I cut off the spline portion, what was remained had a taper to it. So when I tried to thread it, the tap just went down and was able to kick off to the side. So I couldn't get it to line up perfect. So that's why I had to go through with this whole screw up. And then once I got all that together, then it would, it was about oh, 20 thousandths too big of diameter to fit in this, this sleeve. So the majority of the time I wasted was grinding this down so that it would fit in. So um, next step is putting it all together. I'll probably test fit it and get the mounts and the brackets where I like them without putting the column back together just to keep forward progress. And I'll show you how that goes later.